All right, so hello and welcome everybody to the webinar. Um, today we're going to be looking at a very popular and interesting topic. It's how to measure success on social media using analytics. And it's, it's an important topic because as a large or complex organization, you need to be able to show how social contributes to the organization's goals and objectives. And it's, of, it's often important as, as well for securing management buy-in and securing budget and resources for, for the social team. And beyond that, measuring and analyzing the right metrics allows you and your team to focus on what's working well and also try to spend less time on the things that aren't working so well. Um, so that's what we're going to be looking at today. And uh, I hope that you leave today's session with some new ideas or some new methods that you can implement in your own organization. My name is Dan Aston. I'm the marketing manager here at Crowd Control HQ. And I'm joined today with my colleague, George, who is head of client services at Crowd Control HQ. Um, and I know that for many clients who are joining us today, you might recognize, George, recognize George's uh, face from the photo here, or you'll certainly recognize his accent from uh, talking on the phone. <laughs> Thanks very much, Dan, for this lovely introduction. And hi, everyone. It's great to have you today, and I really hope you enjoy the session. <laughs> Thank you, George. Um, so today's session is going to be split into two parts, really. In the first part, I'm going to be looking at why it's so important to be able to effectively measure uh, the success of your social media activity and share some insights into how you can go about approaching that. And the second part, George will be sharing some of the useful, useful reports from the Crowd Control HQ platform, showing some of the details around effectively measuring and analyzing your own social media activity. Okay, so let's get started. Um, and here's a, a really eye-opening stat that I found recently, which I think sums up just one of the reasons why today's topic is so important. So according to some recent research, 45% of marketers say they cannot show the impact of social media on their business. So that's nearly half, which I think really drives home the point that Many organizations, they're investing time and investing resources into social media, but then they're missing what is a really critical element as they don't have the right tools or the right mechanisms in place to, to measure their results. So you need to understand really the motivations and the reasons why you need to be, uh, you need to have social media analytics in place in order to measure your performance and, and your successes. And so measuring social media success is really important for, for a number of reasons, I think. And it's things like um, you need to be able to influence the perception or the reputation of what social media can do within your own organization. You need to be able to shout about the good work and the results that are being delivered from, from social. And it helps you show the potential impact that social media can have across multiple departments within the organization helping others understand that social isn't just for the marketing or the comms team, but it's for, it's for the entire enterprise, really. It allows you to uncover where your efforts and resources are being used effectively, and likewise, where they're not being used effectively. And it allows you to adjust or trial or test and improve your tactics over time in those areas where you, you're seeing that you, you aren't as effective. Um, it allows you to identify gaps in your overall social media strategy and your approach and the type of content and the campaigns that you're publishing and who you're targeting. And finally, it allows you to build a much better understanding of your customers or community and their perceptions, their preferences, their motivations, uh, if engaging with you in the broader context of, of your organization. So in a nutshell, there's, there's, an, there's numerous reasons, really, why measuring your organization's social media activity uh, and successes is, is really important. And one thing that we still see with many organizations <coughs> is that they just put too much focus on measuring the vanity metrics of social media. So you probably heard the phrase vanity metrics before. And that's things such as measuring the number of likes and measuring the number of, of followers. And it's because these are really easy to track, actually, either by the social media networks themselves or using your social media software platform. And generally, <laughs> they only ever increase over time. So the line chart, like you see on the screen here, uh, it always looks positive. But there's a problem here because while they do provide good insight, they're actually very limiting. For example, 
um, reporting on the growth in followers does not provide any insight whatsoever into the amount of engagement that your social media posts are receiving. And often actually having a smaller number of followers who are highly engaged with you and your content is much more valuable than having an enormous number of followers who are completely disengaged with you. Additionally, I think if you're using social media to deliver customer service or answer uh, questions and complaints on social media, you can't really measure your success there just by looking at the number of likes that you've received on, on Facebook and on Twitter. So it's really important to try to match your objectives to the actual metrics that you can measure and analyze. Um, and for large or complex organizations like everyone on, on the line today, um, you probably have multiple social media accounts, multiple social media users or teams of people involved in social media. Um, but there's a few common objectives that we, that we typically see. Um, so you need to start asking yourself, you know, does the metric that I'm measuring and analyzing, does that align with the overall objective and use case for, for social media? And can I actually measure those uh, metrics effectively? Um, so brand awareness. Um, many organizations use social media to, to raise their brand's profile and keep it top of mind with their, with their audience on social media. Um, for public sector organizations, it's actually less about branding, but just more about reaching and informing and educating um, a broad audience. But to measure brand awareness effectively, you need to be able to measure things like the overall reach and impressions of your posts, whereby impressions is actually the total number of times any single post is viewed, and your reach is the number of individual users that have, that have viewed any, any post. Um, so for example, you might have uh, a goal to reach 4 million people per month on average over the next six months time frame uh, for brand awareness. Generating new leads and sales inquiries. So many organizations, they use social to drive traffic and generate leads and inquiries and sales through their website. So measuring engagement in the number of clicks on your posts, the number of clicks you receive is, is really important here. So for example, you might have the objective to achieve an average click-through rate of 10% on posts, or for 15% of all your website visits to be driven from social media and the activity that you're running uh, there. Um, customer service. We know already uh, many people turn to social media as the first point of call um, when they have a, a complaint or a question. And so social is Prime, a primary channel for delivering customer service for, for many organizations. Measuring how quickly and effectively you're able to respond to and solve such inbound inquiries is, is very important. You can measure metrics such as time to first response and average response time, uh, allowing you to help quantify uh, your social customer service efforts. And you can also track things like the sentiment of the messages that you're, you're receiving on social. So you can see whether they're negative uh, or if they're positive and uh, how that changes over time. As well as measuring the outcomes of your social media activity, you should also be measuring your team who are delivering it because after all, even, even with the best content and the best campaigns, if your team isn't aligned, you're going to have a tough job of making a success of it. Um, every organization and social media team is different but there's some common metrics that you can start to track uh, the performance of with a new social media team. And it includes things like uh, the number of outbound posts, perhaps published by each member of the team, or the average handling time of inbound inquiries uh, by each member of the team. And this is really interesting to measure when you have a team that's made up of uh, marketing and comms folks, uh, customer service reps as well, sales reps, even some agency staff as well. And the idea is that you can use these metrics to identify who are your social media stars and who are your top performers and showcase their work and share the best practices with others in the team. And this has proven to really help raise the overall quality and performance of your social media team. Um, okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, the main thing that here is measuring success on social media is about having the right metrics aligned to your top level goal and objectives, having the right tools in place to record your progress, 
Um, and don't only focus on the performance of your posts and your content. You know, also look at the team that's delivering social media for, for your organisation. Um, so that's uh, a quick run through there. So I'm now delighted to pass you over to George, who is actually going to dig into some of the details of what we've just looked at now um, on the Crowd Control HQ platform. Thank you very much for this lovely introduction, Dan. We will shortly be going through different ways of using the Crowd Control HQ reports to link them back to your objectives and also help you with tracking team performance and resourcing as well. For those of you that have used analytics before, you can probably recognize the infographic that we're displaying here. For those of you that haven't, uh, that is the very first thing that you will see if you access the analytics area of Crowd Control HQ. It's this very infographic, which is essentially um, uh, you know, a quantitative representation of your key social media activity. The infographic is worth mentioning that is customizable, meaning that you can change the default uh, settings that Crowd Control SQ are providing you and add the metrics uh, of your own preference. However, the infographic is quite a basic uh, level use of the Crowd Control SQ analytics, and we will actually be covering the reports that are sitting behind this infographic. More specifically, there are four different groups of reports that you can access, as you can see on the screen, the posts and reads, engagement, campaigns, and customer service. We will be looking at carefully selected reports from each of those areas today, and uh, we won't be covering basic reports like follower growth and so on. As Dan mentioned previously, the, the very purpose of this webinar today is to help us move beyond such metrics. It is also worth mentioning that at the top right corner of the screen, in each of the following slides, we will have included which group of reports you need to access in order to, um, uh, to find the report that we are covering in each slide. OK, so keep an eye on the top right corner of the slide then to see which report we're, we're looking at in the platform. Thanks, Dan. All right. So. Um, Posts and reach. How, how can analytics help us go about creating better posts that are more engaging? This is um, probably one of the most common questions that we get from our clients, which is how do I create better content? How do I make my content more engaging? And uh, the best way to improve the content, the reality is that there isn't any other way by analyzing, uh, other than analyzing your own content, identifying what really works and what doesn't for your audience. The report that we have selected to help you improve your engagement is the Outbound Interactions Report. If you click on the report and scroll down, you will see the actual content, which looks very much like what we have in the middle of the screen. You will notice then that all of the content is ranked from the most engaging to the least engaging, based on how much interaction that content has received from your audience. So things like comments, shares, likes, etc., etc. Your goal here is to analyze the pattern of the top performing content so that you are able to reuse it, share it internally, and um, uh, reuse it. Analyze the media, the messages, the people tagged in this content, and so on and so forth. The reality is that there isn't a magic bullet to create this pattern, but it's a methodology of uh, you analyzing the creative work and the messages that you used in your, uh, in your own content. This exercise will allow you to improve your organic activity and create better content overall. Okay, so then how do we align the performance of um, our posts and content back to the objectives and the metrics? Um, this is done through the use of campaigns, um, which is what you can see on the right-hand side of the, the screen. Um, so each organization, regardless the sector, should take a step back and look at their objectives. Uh, you've used a very spot-on uh, list of examples down in your slides, talking about sales and retention, brand awareness, customer care, and the list goes on because it's worth mentioning that these objectives are just indicative. The list is not exhaustive. If you're having trouble, of course, understanding what your objectives look like and how to break them down, feel free to talk to us uh, because we can help you with that. So on the back of those objectives, there are certain actions like promotions, competitions, regular updates, and more. Um, they all form part of your weekly and monthly content plan. You put them in place to support the objectives, essentially. All of that content should be getting tagged to campaigns so that you can then filter this report based on those tags. 
essentially, at the end of it, you will be doing an analysis of the actions for your own your very own objectives. All right. So how, so how can analytics help us identify which content, which content is worthwhile spending advertising budget on? A very useful application of this report is not just about improving your organic activity, but also spotting um, what is the organic content that could prove good candidates for Facebook advertising or Facebook boosting, for instance. When you do Facebook advertising, Facebook will display your content to more people. That is exactly what you pay them to do. But if those people do not interact with your content, you have arguably not maximized the impact of your social media activity. So here's what we are suggesting. Reverse the process. Use this report to identify your top performing organic content before boosting it. Identify the ones that have this X factor and then put budget behind them to benefit from the extra reach. This will allow you to be much more efficient in the way that you allocate your budget. Okay. So I guess in summary, so use the outbound interactions report to identify your top performing posts and the top performing content or trends and topics. Uh, tag content to campaigns so that you can analyze it later and impact your objectives and metrics. And then use your top performing organic posts to identify which content you should think about putting some budget behind. That's absolutely right. Okay, makes sense. All right. Um, so moving on to engagement, um, some users, I mean, some users have tens, even hundreds of Facebook pages. How can they start to identify which pages to, to focus on first for improving the organic and paid activity? Indeed. Um, for, for those ones that have access to many accounts, it is important to be able to locate which pages uh, would require further attention from them. And there are two reports that we have selected for this time, Facebook views and Facebook engagement. They're both dedicated reports to Facebook, as you can imagine. They're very popular, they're very useful, and of course, they come with many unknown words, so please stay focused because we will be covering that today. Let's look on the views first. The views report, which is the one on the left, is split into three different categories, organic, viral, and paid views. To, well, let's, let's use an example action to understand what these um, uh, views are and how they're classified. Every time you publish content, it hits your fans a number of times, and that creates, of course, the organic views. Your fans then choose to share it, tag a friend in it, like it, and engage with it in any such way, which is, of course, creating what we classify as viral views. And finally, by doing Facebook advertising, you increase your paid views as well. Here's how you read this report, the one on the left. Try to identify pages that their viral views are higher than the organic. Visit the activity of those pages and find out what is so different about them and uh, it makes their content generate higher number of viral views compared to the others. Is it because of the opening of a new center? Is it uh, hype about the new product launch? Is it about an updated bin collection schedule for our uh, councils out there? Is it a high profile case for our police forces out there? What is it really that uh, uh, makes this difference? Additionally, you should use the most engaged Facebook page report, the one which is displayed on the right hand side. Um, and also this is a, a very useful one and we will be using an example again to uh, clarify what the different metrics included in this report are. Likes, shares, comments and any other such Facebook actions uh, that are visible to your friends are called a story. For example, you post something out, Dan here shares this content and because we're friends on Facebook, I can see that he shared it. That's because Facebook created a story for me to see that Dan shared your content. If he didn't decide to share it or like it or engage with it in such a way, but let's say he only played the video that you posted in that uh, content, that would be classified as a consumption. As you understand by now, consumptions are not visible to others. However, they still count as engagement. Well, we all know check-ins, uh, potentially from uh, personal use of Facebook, and probably we definitely have that friend that has, uh, they've checked into all bars and restaurants in the world. And finally, the negative feedback, which is about people uh, hiding your content or reporting it to Facebook or asking Facebook not to display this content ever again uh, because they don't find it useful. So 
just to clarify, the negative feedback is not related to reviews that your pages are receiving on Facebook, which is uh, quite frequently uh, confused for. So here's how you need to read this report. Spot those pages with relatively lower number of fans, which however still have strong engagement. More fans do not necessarily guarantee more engagement. Look at the second and third pages that we have in this example. We've blurred out the names because we're using real data here. Pages with fewer likes but greater engagement should be used to analyze their contents through the outbound interactions report that we covered in the previous slide. There will be learnings and things to take away from their activity, which could potentially be applied to other accounts too. Okay, so, so use the Facebook view and the, the Facebook engagement reports to identify the pages that require a bit more analysis. That's right. Okay, so then uh, we know many organizations are running campaigns on social to, to drive website visits and new leads and sales. How can we analyze the performance uh, in this area? We will be using the total clicks report to achieve that. Uh, the link clicks reports have many different applications. The public sector, for example, are frequently pushing out content regarding uh, scheduled road closures, service updates, etc., etc. And the purpose of that is to warn or educate their audience about such, uh, such events. The private sector, on the other hand, could push out content about new product launches, new services, mobile apps, and, and the list goes on. In both of those cases, the report that we have selected is used to track what is the impact on their audience by seeing uh, how many times their links have been clicked on. Just as before, and you hear me, you will hear me repeating myself now, if you want to link this back to your objectives, you need to make sure that you're tagging your content, uh, your, your activity into campaigns. That's how important it is. When you're running this report, use the campaigns filter to review the impact that social media have had in educating your audience about the new launch, about the road closures, the, the uh, updated bin collection in the example that we used previously and, and many more. However, it is worth mentioning that we are only tracking click-throughs for content that is posted through Crowd Control HQ. So we will not be able to track click-throughs for content that you posted directly on uh, LinkedIn, on Facebook or on Twitter. Okay, so, so use the total clicks report to, to filter your results by, by campaign so you can then link to the results later uh, back to your objectives. Absolutely, and the use of campaigns is again critical in this report to make it back to them. All right, um, so we talked a little bit earlier about the increasing use of social media to deliver customer service. Um, how can users go about measuring the performance in this area? For those of you that have used Crowd Control SQ, the, you, you know that the go-to tool for customer service activity in Crowd Control SQ is the conversations tool. Uh, through there, you can assign content, you can tag content with sentiments, and of course, you can resolve the cases that are running currently on your social media accounts. So what we will be doing today is looking at the customer service group of reports overall in order to answer this question. One of the most common metrics are the response times, which are probably the most popular for customer service performance in general. As you can see on the screen, it shows you on average how long it takes to respond to questions on social media. However, another useful one when it comes to measuring time is the handling times report, which shows you how long it takes for uh, the content to be responded to, provided that the content has been assigned to a colleague. So there are many situations that you have to assign content to a colleague because they uh, own the, uh, they have the expertise or the information that is required to respond to it and therefore handling time shows you for how long it's been uh, assigned to them before they respond to it. And of course, another very useful one which uh, Dan you used in your uh, introduction as well is the sentiment analysis report. Um, in our example here, it's the one with the little red grumpy face saying 47%, which shows you whether the overall sentiment has been negative, neutral, or positive. Once again, though, um, you need to use the campaigns filter, and the use of it in this particular report is critical, especially for complaints. Measuring complaints is, uh, is probably the most, um, one of the most important things that you need to track on your social media activity if you are doing uh, customer service analysis. And 
by filtering your your uh, this report by by complaints by this uh, by this tag, you can see what is your average response time or average handling time for complaints specifically, regardless what your overall times are. All right, and I can see a few metrics here on the screen that are actually related to performance of the team. So can you talk us through that briefly? Indeed, um, this report will allow you to have access to uh, various metrics around team performance and will show you, for instance, response times, resolution times, handling times and more for each of your team members. Um, the, the, the process is very similar to previous reports. You just click on them and they will expand to show you more information about the team performance. This way you can find out which colleagues are excelling in responding to content and which ones require some extra help or even training from you. All right, great. So, so there's a combination of uh, customer service and team performance metrics here. Very interesting to see. Um, what else is there to consider around measuring social media team performance and resourcing as well? There are more reports around uh, team performance and resourcing, and we have selected the most active user to begin with, um, which is displayed on the left-hand side. The most active user report will give you a list of your most active colleagues on social media. They're being ranked based on their activity through crowd control HQ. So this is not content that they posted directly on LinkedIn or on, on Facebook or Twitter, simply because we are not able to track it back to them. We do not have the audit trail uh, to do that in such, uh, such an occasion. These reports display um, uh, you know, the, the, the performance of, of your team based on replies, uh, shares, retweets, likes, and so on and so forth. They will give you an indication of which ones are the most busy and which ones aren't, meaning that they could take on some more responsibility from a resourcing perspective, keeping, of course, other things in mind, such as, for example, the role in the business. But once you've been through this process and you have identified the top performance, uh, top performance within your uh, colleagues, the next thing that you need to do in terms of resourcing is identify which accounts need this extra resourcing using the most popular Twitter and most popular Facebook reports. They will display all of your social media accounts ranked from, ranked from the busiest to the least busy ones. Um, for example, to put things into perspective, if you're getting thousands of inbound posts um, and uh, the majority of it is uh, on your main account, it is likely that you will need a bigger team and a much more efficient team to handle that account alone. And this account will be displayed at the top of the list. It takes into consideration only content that will need responding to, so posts, comments, and direct messages. Therefore, you can spot which accounts are being hammered with inbound activity and allocate your, your resources accordingly. If you are tagging complaints, you can apply a campaign filter to this report to spot which accounts are getting the most complaints and potentially even put a business case together for your customer service team, or your force control room or your call center to get on board and help you with the delivery uh, on social media. I'll save you a lot of time and allow you to focus on what's really important, or your objectives, basically, while the appropriate department will be dealing with uh, all of the inbound inquiries. So, to summarize, um, our suggestions are use the outbound interactions report to identify patterns that will help you create more successful content. Use the Facebook views and Facebook engagement reports to identify Facebook accounts that are overperforming and therefore you can do further analysis on them using the outbound interactions report. Track your click-through rates using the total clicks report and uh, be able to link them back to your objectives. Analyze response times and measure team performance using the customer service, the most active user and the most popular account reports. The most important action though to remember from this webinar um, is to set up the campaign tags based on your objectives and then tag your content so that you can analyze the activities of your own objectives on social media, link them back to your organization. That will bring all of those reports that we covered today to life. And remember, if you need help with your objectives, talk to us and we will be able to help you. Okay, that's great. Thanks, thanks, George. Um, I know we've covered quite a lot of ground here in a pretty short period of time, but I know we're at uh, 
uh, 11.30 now, so we're about, we're about done with the, with the time. Um, I hope you found it interesting and informative. Uh, I guess to wrap it up, um, you know, just think about once you begin to put the right metrics and analytics in place, uh, you gain a much clearer picture of what works and what doesn't work for you in your organization on social media. You can more easily show uh, your social media successes today, uh, but then also help improve and deliver more value over time as you go forward. You know, the very short nature, uh, short term nature of social media means it's necessary to update and adapt your approach, you know, almost continuously. Measuring and analyzing the right metrics gives you the insight you need to, to be able to do that. Um, so with that, uh, thanks everybody for joining. Um, if you're interested to learn more about the topic or you have questions, you know, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Please visit the website, follow us on your favorite social media networks. Um, you can see the links here on the screen. Um, and if you want to talk more about this topic, you can see Georgie's email uh, here on the screen as well. And you can just get in contact and drop us a message uh, anytime. Um, so thanks again. And we hope to see you uh, on another webinar sometime very soon. And enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Please remember, as Dan said, feel free to get in touch with us. We've covered quite advanced reports today and advanced metrics. So if you do have questions, do get in touch. Thank you, everybody, for joining. And uh, have an amazing rest of the day. Right, great. Thank you. Bye-bye.